delighted to be talking to you this morning about uh, something that we at Cisco term the Internet of Everything. And if all of us uh, take a step back and just think about what's happening right now, the speed of change is quite possibly like something we've never seen before. The fact that uh, this year the number of mobile devices will exceed the number of people on the planet, quite extraordinary. I'm sure all of us have more than one mobile device or one connected device on us today. And quite scarily, if we keep going up to three, four, five, there'll be people in the room who put their hand up and say, yeah. So at uh, one time I did that at a presentation and someone actually said he had eight devices. I made him get out all of his eight devices to show me and indeed he had two mobiles, two laptops and an iPad. Um, and the fact that two thirds of, of the world's internet traffic is going to be on, on video. And that, that in itself, the speed of that change and the enormity of it is just a huge opportunity for us all. And what the Internet of Everything really provides for us is, a, is an opportunity to connect people, data, processes and things, um, as we never have done before. You start to think about machine-to-machine -machine collaboration, you start to think about the people that don't have access yet, you start to think about just 2% of those devices that aren't connected to the Internet today, and the data that will produce, the ability to manufacture and process that data, and get it to the right people at the right time and the processes that you need to, to, to analyse that. It becomes quite an extraordinary opportunity. And you need fast IT to capture all of this. So um, I am going to be talking to you today not about the architecture, although that's what we at Cisco are spending a lot of time on, investing in how we innovate and get the architecture, the network, to be able to be agile, be hyper-attentive, hyper-aware, um, and also to be predictive. I'm not going to take you down that technology route, that's where we are spending our time, but I'm going to talk to you about what this Internet of Everything in our opinion means, and hopefully give you something to, to go back and reflect on as you go through the rest of the day and you hear from some of the other thought leaders that are here with us. So we've done some work to look at what this means in terms of an opportunity, and based on our consulting services, we've globally interviewed 70% uh, businesses that account for 70% of the global GDP. The estimate is that this is a 19 billion trillion, sorry, 19 trillion dollar opportunity worldwide. That's a lot of zeros at the end. And we break that down into looking in the private sector and the public sector. And that sounds like a lot of money. That's a lot, a lot of zeros. And you think, oh, how did you did you come up with a number that's got so many zeros on it, particularly when we start to, to, to break it down. And there is some thought behind it. So if we take a look at the public sector for the moment, and I know that we've got a very, we've got a very group here, uh, we'll be working across industries and, and different points in that, in that ecosystem. There are five key areas that that number breaks down into, and I'll just spend a, a tiny bit of time talking through this. So increased revenue, if you start to think about connecting and providing data in a way that we haven't done before, the potential for revenue at the public sector increases. I'll take parking as an example. Um, we have a live working demo of this, it's not even a demo, it's real, in Nice and Barcelona, where you have the intelligence to read the number plate, first of all direct cars to a free space because you have the intelligence and the connectivity with radars and the connected platform to know where they are. You direct cars as they're entering a parking lot or a street to where the nearest parking place is. You're able to read that license plate and buy mobile devices, pay whatever fee you have for that parking space. Um, the revenue in these in within a year has gone up four times, increased four times in less than a year as a result of that technology. That's a very, very real example. Reduced costs. Worldwide, the public sector uh, employs around 350 million people. So the opportunity to make that workforce more productive, to make them more efficient is huge. And through mobile technology, through video, just as they start to pretend, you increase the productivity and reduce the cost of that workforce. Um, militarized uh, defense. I don't need to talk to us here about what we think a connected command center would do for us, what we think the ability to try and at least, first of all, um, understand where the threats are through technology, um, internet searching, that kind of capability would improve the defense and security system we know very real here in Kenya. 
but also when you look at command centers in Moscow, in the UK, in Canada, we now have hugely connected records of citizens connected to the police, um, making them a much more efficient um, police force in the first, uh, first instance. And the citizen experience, so with the Huduma, we, we, we kind of know what that might feel like, although that's all very much paper-based still today. But when you reduce the search time of looking for whether you're trying to get a passport, whether you're trying to register a birth or a death, reducing the search time for that information, ensuring better health outcomes for your citizens, they are all very, very real um, processes, events that will improve, increase the productivity and efficiency of the public sector. And through the Internet of Everything, through connecting those people, processes, data and things, we believe that that's the value that can be realised. And we've done a bit of work to look at that for Kenya. Um, and this is a, so this has been a, a piece of work commissioned by Cisco. It's not, you know, the, the final number, and in fact, this is probably the most conservative estimate. But in the very short term, the ability for us to recognise how connecting citizens and how connecting the city could increase efficiency for us all is something we all have an opportunity to play a part in, in bringing to life. We've given an example here around smart payments. We all know about the, the cashless payment system that will be coming in for the public transport. We know about the healthcare and improving the outcomes there. We know about um, bring your own device being a, a real trend for us in the workplace, but it works for us as we walk around shopping malls, as we walk around hotels. Um, a good example of a convention center would be that before we all got here, they understand that there's going to be an increase in the need for their Wi-Fi capability, for example, that they actually know who we are, and as we're walking in, there's a personalized uh, welcome note because on our phones, they're tracking where we are. They understand that there's an increased revenue opportunity, that maybe there are discounts and offers they could be provided to each one of us or our employees, and they understand the impact of catering and their own back staff, the back end of the back of house staff. So as a convention centre, as a city, as a citizen, you can start to understand what the internet of, of everything can really mean. And whether you're on the device side or whether you're on the application side, whether you're on the hardware side, it really is an opportunity for us all to, to play in. Across the private sector, that's an estimated 6.3 billion of value that we can realise. So whether you are looking at a, a processing plant, a manufacturing plant, and you start to now have intelligence on each of your um, components. You understand where you can increase or reduce shrinkage, shall we say, reduce the waste, increase the efficiency, whether you are working in advertising. So if you understand that there are now 200 or 300 extra people that are going to be in the safari park today, why is that not a huge advertising possibility that whilst we do have advertising from the parts of today and paper, it could be electronic and a mobile billboard is available on every one of our phones. We all spend a lot of time in traffic. Imagine what we could do if we do video. I, I, uh, I actually did join a meeting with one of our biggest partners via telepresence, which is high definition video that we have from my office <laughs> on Tuesday. And it was like I'd grown three heads when I entered this. The, the, the people on the other side just could not understand where I was. I must, I must be international. I cannot be in Nairobi and not be in the same room with them. And I'm like, yes, I can. And I've just saved myself two hours driving to your office and coming back. So all of us, I think, can benefit from that, from the opportunity of video. And, and the conversation goes on and on and on. I'm here with my colleague, Shane Ringy, who runs the channel for us here at Cisco. And I hope what you're going to do is continue the dialogue, not just with us, but each one of you here uh, today, so that you can understand and we can start working together on how we realize this. The fact is, and isn't this, isn't this the interesting thing, that whilst we start to get more intelligent about the data we capture, about the processes we use, about the things that now were dark before and now are now connected, they have an IP address, we can do something intelligent about them. The fact is, is that when we continue our research and we look at the difference between the opportunity you could realize and the value you actually do, 50% of that difference is down to the people involved. This is up to us. It's the people that are going to figure out which are the devices that are dark today that can go and be connected. It will be people that figure out what the, the opportunity is of that additional data that's being captured can now turn into in terms of enhancing real-time decision-making. 
it will be people that figure out that process. And unless you have people thinking about this, working on this, you will not be the ones that will be part of this market transition. And um, I, I know that when I look at this and I think about this, it really hits home because we can all sort of sit around and go, oh, great, we're going to have lots more devices connected and think about the opportunity. It's actually about getting people focused on it, and that's why I'm, I'm really happy to be here talking to all of you about it, because I know you will have fantastic teams back in your own or in your own workplaces, that if we can get the power of all of them thinking about this, imagine what we're able to achieve. You can think about, uh, I've just talked about this, but the applications that are needed. You know, once you start thinking about how you process this data, Cisco has technology now called application-centric infrastructure, which processes the data at the edge versus bringing it back to the core. Think about what you're able to do when you put some focus on this, when you start developing these applications. The opportunity is endless. And our people need to start thinking, our companies need to start thinking about a completely different way of working. This is about collaboration like we've never had before. I know Cisco, we're talking to vendors that we've never had to. We're in mining, where typically that's not been a network that you can go in and put a cable into. You know, these guys are on weeks out somewhere in the middle of the sea. Um, and so we're having to learn about new conversations, about new industries. And so when you are thinking about this with your people, Think about what that means and ask them to build a collaboration strategy that's about connecting with a network they never have. Cisco is a partner-centric company. We have, for our 30-year history, always had our partner <coughs> ecosystem. We're extremely proud of it. 97% of all of our business goes through partners, and we are very aware that today that partner ecosystem will now continue to evolve. Uh, when I look around the speakers here today, I, I, I think all of you are someone that I need to spend some time with to connect with in a different way than before. And so you thinking about your own individual ecosystem, who are you working with, is really, really important. And today it's very unique in the, in, the, in the wide breadth and depth of the audience that we have. So I'm going to leave you with just three things to remember. The internet of everything, when you hear about it, when you Google it, it is absolutely right here. And it is absolutely an opportunity we have in Kenya and across East Africa. I must spend 30 to 40 percent of my week actively involved in either the architecture side or the market opportunity around this transition. So it's real and it's happening, and people get it. It is not a conversation when two years ago people used to look at us a little bit strange. John Chambers, our CEO, jokes that he had to buy someone a drink to convince them to listen to him about the internet of everything. Now he gets time with every government leader around the world. So it's absolutely real and it's here. And if you could think about one thing that you personally take away from this, it's how your people can work on a process and defining what this means for you. And I look very, very, very forward to talking to you about this in the very near future. Thank you very much.